your customer places an order, you go to the Google Sheets and it's automatically synced here. You change the status from on hold to completed, go to Google Sheets and it's moved to the next sheet. Or you open up the sheet that contains all your products, you would like to update your prices, for example this one here, and you will update a stock status for another product here. Now you go back to the shop, open up your products, and you see that the price is synced here, and the stock status has changed. So as you probably figured out, I'm gonna show you today how to sync your WooCommerce shop with Google Sheets. It's easy to set up, it's gonna take only a couple of minutes, so if you're interested, then jump in. Now first things first, the plugin we're going to use today is called WooCommerce Google Spreadsheet Add-on, and it's not a free plugin, it costs 49 bucks. It's a one-site license with lifetime of updates, as with all Code Canyon plugins. I have used it on a couple of my sites and it's working real well. Also the plugin support is really fast and straight to the point. Usually I have received the answer from the plugin support team within a, a couple of hours, so that's a good thing. So take a look at the description of this video, there is a link to the plugin we're going to use today. So in order to keep the tutorial short, I'm gonna skip the part where we are going to download and install it. But there is one thing I have to mention. After installing it, go to the license and activate your license, otherwise it's not gonna work for you. So if all that is done, then go to the Google API settings. And now let's take a look how to get the API key for your site. Now pay attention that there is a nice documentation button here. If you click on it, it will open up all the documentation that the plugin has. Although in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Google API key. Take a look, there is a link here, Cl click on it. And it opens up the tutorial. There is also a video tutorial about it. Now, if you hover on this word here, then click on it and it will open up the Google Cloud console. If you previously already have created some API keys, then click here and select new project. Give it the title, for example, Woo Sheets and click on create. Now select your project here. Pay attention that it should appear up here. Now click on enable APIs and services. Search for Google Drive. This one here. Open it up and click on enable. Now go to the library and search for Google Sheets. This one here. Open it up and enable it. Next click here to open up the consent screen. Select external and click create. Give your app a name, for example, WooCommerce Sheets. Enter your email address. And under the authorized domains, add your domain that you're going to use. I'm gonna use wsimpletoots.com Once again, enter your email address and click on save and continue. Scroll down and press once again save and continue. And once again save and continue. Now if this is done, click on back to dashboard. And click on publish app. Now press and confirm. If this is done, go to the credentials and click on create credentials. This time select this one with client ID. Application type, select the web application. Enter your application name, for example, WooSheets. Now go back to the shop for a second. And there is a authorized redirect URIs under the Google API settings. Copy it. Go back here, under the authorized redirect URIs, click on add URI, paste the address, and click create. Now Google provides you client ID and client secret key. So, copy.
copy first the client ID, go back to the shop's settings and this client ID goes here. Now copy the client secret key and paste it here. Next, click on save. And now click on click here to generate an authentication token. Select your account. Now click on advanced and click on the link here, go to your site. It says unsafe, but don't worry. Select those two options here and click on continue. You will be redirected to your site. All the tokens and keys are visible, which means you have integrated your site with the Google Sheets. Now, just to be sure that everything is working well, we're going to click on save. And if this is done, we're going to go to the general settings. Here we can sync all our orders in a separate Google spreadsheet. I can select the order status I need to be synced. I'm going to select processing on hold and completed. I'm not going to select all other ones, although you can do that. If you have any other custom order statuses, you can choose here. Next, I'm going to open up the drop down and select create new spreadsheet and I'm gonna give it the title All Woo Orders. Now I'm gonna scroll down and select whether the raw data is sorted by order wise or product wise. I suggest you to choose product wise. This view makes more sense. If you choose order wise, all the products in the order are displayed in the same cell. What I mean by that is, as you see, this is order wise raw data, all the products that are purchased are in the same cell and it's visually a bit cluttered. But product wise row data, as you see, there is order, its ID is 49 and you see all the products that has been added to this order. The same with these here. As I said, I prefer the product wise view. Now there are a bunch of data you can export and you can drag them around here. Just grab it and drop it in a place you would like them to be. There is also a pencil mark here. If you click on it, you can add your own cell titles. I use my own titles here and I have selected all the data I would like to sync between shop and the Google Sheets. If I would like to add something else, for example, billing country, I'm going to activate it and drag it in a place I would like it to be. If there are coupon codes that are used with a order once again, I can activate it and drag it in a place. I would like it to be shown. Give it the title, press on check mark to save it and you're done. If you scroll down, you can select whether to select the categories to be synced. Maybe you would like to sync all the orders from the accessories categories or any other category. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sync all the orders. If you would like to show the product name as sheet headers, you can do that, but I'm not going to do that. If you would like to allow copy same columns, once again, activate it. Static headers, you can do that. If the do not schedule is activated, that means every time the order is placed, the information is synced automatically. If you don't want to do that, then you can activate automatic scheduling. For example, once daily, twice daily, every 15 days, monthly and so on. You can choose days or just run it one time. I'm not going to schedule it. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to freeze header because it's later much easier to see what's what. There are some background color options for you, odd rows and even rows. And also there is an option to see the graphs over there. Sale orders, total orders, product sold, total customers, and so on. You can choose between two types, this one and this one here. I'm going to leave it as it is. This one I'm going to select option two. This one also option two. Now I'm going to save it. It's going to take approximately 10 seconds. Meanwhile, I'm going to go to my Google Sheets. I'm going to refresh it. And as you see, there is all Woo orders sheet generated here. I'm going to open it up. There is processing orders, on hold orders, completed orders, sales orders, graphs, bunch of information. 
if I click on on hold orders, nothing happens. It's because I haven't placed any order. Now, if I click on click to sync here, as you see, it says synchronizing. There are a bunch of orders here. It says all is synced. And if I open it up, everything is here. On hold orders, processing orders, completed orders, some graphs, as you see, total sales and so on by month, this time graph, bunch of cool stuff here, even total used coupons. Now let's test whether it works with a automatic syncing. If I place an order, I'm going to add something to the cart. I'm going to go to the checkout, give it a title, Woo test, for example, let's place an order, open up the orders, it should be under the on hold order, this one here. So, who test, placed an order, all the information is here. Works like a charm. Now what happens if I change the status of the order, at the moment it's under the on hold orders. Well, I'm gonna go to the orders, change the status to complete it for example, open up Woo sheets, as you see, it disappeared and it moved here. It happens automatically, you don't have to do anything. Awesome, isn't it? Now let's go to the product settings. Basically the same as before, I'm gonna create a new spreadsheet. Give it a title, for example, all Woo products. Once again, drag all the information you would like to display in the sheet. Save it. Now I can scroll down and click to sync. Before I do that, I'm going to go to see what's happening here. As you see, all Woo products, it's empty, but all the fields are already here. Since I haven't synced it, it's empty, so let's click to sync. There are 25 products. All products are synchronized. I open it up and it's here. And as you see also with a preview images. Now, what if I would like to change something here, for example, the price, and I would like the price or stock data inside this table, and I would like it to be synced into my shop. Well, let's go back to the back end. Let's click on import products, insert products, update products, and delete products. Now I'm gonna drag this one here for inserting, this one here for updating. I'm gonna do that because those will be the first columns. It's much easier for me to see what's what. So I'm gonna save. And when it's done, I'm gonna open up my table once again. And as you see, there are three columns here. Now, if I would like to update something, I'm gonna enter one here. That is a sign that this product should be updated. Take a look, golden lamp product. I'm gonna give it the price, 789. Sale price is gonna be 719. Next one, this one, heart clump. I'm gonna once again update it. I'm gonna enter one here. And this time I'm gonna change the stock amount from two to five. In order to make the syncing work, there are two ways. One option is I'm gonna click on import product. It says, are you sure? I'm gonna say, okay. It will check and says two products will be updated. I'm gonna click on proceed. It's updating the information. All products are imported successfully. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go to the products. And now I had golden lamp here, as you see, regular price and sale price, as I set it to be. Next one was this one from two to five, works like a charm. This was manual syncing. Now let's set up automatic scheduling. I'm gonna set it to every 30 minutes. If you would like to set it less, then you should contact with the plugin support. I asked about it and the support team said that Google API has some limitations, but if you have a small shop, then the recurrence time 
can be set up less than 30 minutes, they will give you a code how to do that. At the moment I'm going to set it to every 30 minutes. I'm going to save it. Open up all the products here. I'm going to update this one here. No sale price. And this one here in stock 4 for example. Now I'm not going to wait for half an hour but but I can assure you that within a half an hour it will sync the products. Now let's see how to delete the product. For example, I'm going to delete this one here. There is a column delete. I'm going to just press one here. And I'm going to insert the product. I'm going to just paste one line here. Insert one. I'm going to give it a random title. Random hat, for example. SKU is random hat price, for example, 25 and all other information. I'm going to leave it as it is. Pay attention that if you would like to add images here, then you should add the full URL here. First image, this is going to be the featured image, second image and third image. And they are separated by pipe here. There is one thing, there is a product ID, I have to delete this one here. So what will we do? We're gonna insert one product, we're gonna delete one product, and we're gonna update this one and this one. Now I'm not gonna wait for half an hour, so I'm gonna just show how will it work. I'm gonna import the product. Okay. It says that it will insert one product, update two products and delete one product. Proceed. And import it successfully. Now let's go to the product and see what happened here. As you see, my hat is deleted, but there is a random hat product added here. Price is updated and stock is updated. All good. Now, as you see, the product we said to be deleted is also removed from the table. If we go to the product page and take a look at the trash, it's here. Let's restore it and see what happens now. So it's restored. Let's go here. It's here. And as you show it automatically synced back into the sheet again. It's like a magic, isn't it? So in order to keeps the tutorial short, I'm not going to go over the customer settings, although you can also export customers in a similar way. You can also export coupons and you can also export orders in a separate spreadsheet you can download. Pay attention that this option here will not sync to the Google Sheets. We did it under the general settings, but with the export orders, you can download a file here. You can select the date range categories and so on. Now besides this video I have also made a Toro tutorial about how to bulk edit your products in a simple way. For example if I would like to change the price for this product here in a simple way I could do it as easy as changing something in my Excel spreadsheet. I can open up variations if needed. I can change images easily and so on. So if you're interested in this tutorial, then take a look at the screen right now and you see the video. Now, before you go, if you like this video, then press thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if you have any additional questions. Meanwhile, take care.